ladies and gentlemen, they had it. It was in their hands. They could taste it. They had it in their hands, and they blew it. Butterfingers slipping out of their hands onto the ground to seal the game. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we're talking about the Phoenix Suns. But we'll get deeper into that for a moment. But thank you very much for tuning in. Today is Monday. I am the Professor John Gotti, always by my side, the conqueror himself of podcasting, Doc to God. How are you doing, Doc? I'm doing great, Professor John Gotti, the king of RNG, the troll master, the data analyzing ninja, the conqueror of his own fate, the terminator. Best podcast machine. Tranquilo. Doc El Idolo. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good, brother. <laughs> doing good. Can't even complain. Um, I mean, actually, and I can't. You don't complain. have anything to complain about. I don't have anything to complain about. But if you're a Phoenix <sighs> Suns fan, you got plenty to complain about. Oh, yeah. I mean, game four and five. It's nothing really I can even say. Game yet. four, I, we made our argument with that. Yeah. Because the referee play was awful. Game I five, really wish I could have said something about Phoenix that one. but had it. Hmm. They lost it, they got it back, and then they lost it again. <laughs> well, I mean, I think at this point, um, and this kind of goes back to what you were saying about game three, uh, when the Suns, I think you said, were playing with their food, right? Mm-hmm. Um and I no, felt was, uh, game two. Game two. Awesome. Game yeah. two. Um, I felt game four was a playing with their food kind of thing, and this time, you know, the food got cold, right? <laughs> so, so the food pretty much wound up getting up and and falling off the plate, right? Um, but game five, I don't know. I just feel like the sun is setting. It's very unfortunate because the sun is definitely setting. The sun is yeah. definitely setting. I mean, Devin Booker's putting it all out there. You can't you can't say he he hasn't tried. I'll tell you that right oh, now. No. no, 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 without question. Um Yeah, and it's nothing it's nothing that the, the three, right? Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton are doing I, I guess for game five that would have cost them the loss. I think in this particular situation, it, it really just happened to be the Bucks night. Now game for completely different story. You know, you completely talked about it. Completely different story. Um, the referees had it in for most of the game. Um, I think they want this to go seven, but I, mean, I, I still believe it will go seven. And I, I, I really do believe that Phoenix should win now, the series. Now, I think sure Doc uh, is, <laughs> is amending his previous claims of it going I mean, I, have no, I, I mean, I have no choice. It's already <laughs> dirty. Yeah, we're already beyond that point. Um, will the Bucks close it out tomorrow? I don't think so, but I the mean, way the, the crowd seems being, to believe so. The way everything is being uh, framed, you know, and we don't like to talk about wrestling bookings a lot, you know, because a lot of people don't find that to be boring. It's like Doc with his GM hat, you know, I have my booking hat. Um, this is being booked mm-hmm. as the coronation for Giannis. I don't know if you noticed this, but everything has been predicated towards Giannis throughout this entire series. The entire series, Doc. This is a coronation. No, definitely. Now they're going to come back home. The fans are going to be absolutely hype. Bro. And many are going to feel like this is a coronation for Giannis going over that hump and making it to, you know, championship land. I think it comes down to also the the money factor, you know, like who sells more jerseys, right? Yeah. You know, between Devin Booker and Giannis. Um, but honestly, if, if I'm the NBA, I think I want Devin Booker to, to win. I want Chris Paul. I want Devin Booker. I want... 
the Suns to win this finals only because yeah, that I feel like, story. yeah, I feel like, yeah, the feel good story is good, but I believe that Devin Booker has a better chance of being a star than Giannis. If that's the narrative that we're going with, um, I think getting Chris Paul that ring, right. Getting Devin Booker who people are all, all of a sudden starting to compare to Kobe, right. That's what people are doing. Oh, you know, Kobe, retired on this date. Oh, Devin Booker was retired. Yeah, he like, was born on this date. Um, you know, Devin Booker wears this number. Kobe, yeah, it's there's a lot of that going on. Um, and I know Coach Kyle Perry talked very, very high, highly of Devin Booker years ago um, before people really, really started giving him his credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now he's taking his game to another level and we're getting a chance to see it on a national stage. Um and I think at this particular point, Devin Booker is elevating his game where now he's passing the likes of the grouping that he was with, right? Because he's grouped in with Dame and he's he was grouped in kind of with, um, you know, Spida and a couple other people because yeah. they're, they're on that cusp. But here he is competing two 40-point games in the finals back-to-back, Yeah. right? Yeah. Back to back. Yeah. So in my opinion, to me, it's gonna be one of the situations where, hey, this guy can play. Do I think that this Bucks team, when you look at it and say, hey, they're going to be a team that's gonna compete for multiple finals? Absolutely not. Um, I I don't think it's gonna happen, but I will say that this team has been in the playoffs and had heartbreaking losses for the last two to three years. Mm-hmm. So maybe the buck just stopped now, right? It's like, we're not doing this. We're going to keep fighting. Uh, obviously, the Suns haven't been in the playoffs this deep for a long time. Um, it's It stinks because they are really a good team, but I don't know if they'll be able to climb, obviously, with an aging Chris Paul, if they're going to be able to climb this particular mountain again. So... Uh, I'm, I I hate to say it, but as you stated, it could be well over if they're building that narrative. But if it was me, I would build the narrative in reverse. No, no. Everyone wants these finals to be over. And here's the problem. And this is the part that's really sad. No one really cares about this finals, which is why they want the Bucks to win it. And And I say that, and I know that's a hot take, but sure. it's also the truth for the casuals, for the media. No, I get it. I get it. They want this to be over as soon as possible because Giannis, to them, is the biggest star on the floor. So he deserves to win. No, I get it wholeheartedly. Um, Without consideration I I hate, I don't of like it. how well the Suns played these playoffs, and they played really well. Yeah, they played really, see really how, well. I mean, let's see how it plays out. I mean... Obviously, we have Game Six tomorrow, which I'm—I mean, as an NBA, as a basketball fan, right? I'm hoping that it goes to seven, mm-hmm. um, because that's when we'll really see all out, you know, do or die, and I don't mean bets die. That's a okay. That, that was pretty clever. Win or go home. This is really but, win or lose the championship for the Suns. Like there's, well, of course. I mean, like, that's, that's what I'm saying. Crazy. I'm hoping that it. That's what I'm hoping that it goes to seven. That's what I was saying because I want to see. I, I want to see how big oh, it can get. I'm gonna have a close eye on this game tomorrow, folks. <laughs> of course, of course, um, and hopefully, because you I know, I want to see how people react to this. I want to see what they have to say about this, especially if it's anywhere close to what happened in Game 4. Game 5, they cleaned it up. I will give them credit for that. They cleaned it up. I don't know if they just replaced their officiating crew or whatnot. I believe one of the uh, crew members actually wasn't there because of COVID. Uh, so they actually had a replacement ref. I believe the um, the understudy ref was actually a uh, referee in that game. So that was interesting. Um, But... I want to keep a close eye because the referee play will definitely play a role towards how the rest of, well, this last game of the season is going to turn out. Right. 
Uh, it should definitely be interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to sending uh, to seeing if the Suns can push seven. I mean, obviously both of these teams. I mean, obviously usually, you know, in the last couple of games the Suns have ended in in five or six, right? Six, I think it was. Um, but the Bucks have not been able to really close out either. So they've been behind. So I don't know. Do the Bucks have that killer instinct? I guess is a question that we're going to be watching for tomorrow. I will agree with you. But speaking of killer instinct, apparently the NBA decided it wants to have its own killer instinct and be progressive. Shock. Por qué? And they have... Well, I wouldn't say the NBA. I would say the owners <laughs> have decided to become progressive. <laughs> That's better. Doc, this offseason, we had not one, not two, not three, but seven head coaches that are African-American, some of which getting their first fit, actually. Right. I was going to say that. Um, I mean, obviously... Nate McMillan it was the interim, right? Of course. Um, but he did a heck of a job with the Hawks. So I, 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 I would have probably slapped the owner myself had he gone in a different direction. <laughs> um, but yes, African American head coaching cycle. Obviously, we had Jamal Mosley of the Orlando Magic, Willie Green being hired by the New Orleans Pelicans, Jason Kidd for the Dallas Mavericks. Chauncey Billups for the Trailblazers, Ime Aduko from for the Boston Celtics. Um, obviously, the aforementioned Nate McMillan taking over for the Hawks, and now Wes Unsell Jr. for the Washington Wizards. Um, very surprising, not only for Unsell but Willie Green as well. Actually, mostly I would say four out of the seven were pretty surprising. Yes. Uh, Jamal Mosley, Willie Green, Unseld, and Udoka. Um, I felt Udoka not so much. Um, he definitely did his thing as an assistant. <clears throat> he did, but even I mean, still. but this is what we wanted though. We wanted an assistant who was doing their thing to get that opportunity, and he got that opportunity. This is what we wanted. I mean, all of them were great assistants. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Chauncey, obviously, Jason. You know, yeah, I would say um, Willie Green definitely surprised me because it came out of nowhere because I didn't hear about him in any type of interview process. Yeah. So that was the only one that I'm surprised about, but I'm excited to see what happened. We have new blood outside of, True. you know, Jason Kidd and Rick Carlisle. I mean, Nate McMillan, of course, too, because, you know, he has tenure. But also, I think with Willie Green, I think – him and you know i think this happens all the time right you have a coach on on a team that's in the finals or in deep into the playoffs right because he's on the suns right now so yep. you have a coach that's an assistant with the team that's you know in the finals, in the finals. or in the playoffs yep. right or real deep and it's like hey we want to run our offense similar to how they run their offense let's let's try to pluck this guy right now, Jamal Mosley, I'm not 100% sure um, his particular tenure, but um, again, I think this is just one of those situations where, you know, somebody gets an opportunity, you got to run with it. The Magic, I think, personally, should have went with a big name coach uh, because they're, they're in a rebuild, not only their identity, but their actual play style. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy with the hire as well. Um, and Wes Unseld, I think, is a is a really, then really just good... Just to give people some clarity, uh, Jamal Mosley was the Dallas Maverick assistant coach uh, from 2014 to, of course, this past season. Right. Um, which, hey, listen, anybody that comes from that tree, right, of Jim Carrey... Uh, I, I didn't mean Jim Carrey. I'm sorry. I said it again. We're about to get canceled, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but anybody that settles, you know, anybody that comes from that particular tree is, is really good. Oh, he was also an uh, assistant coach during uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers' dark days mm -hmm. after LeBron left in 2010. Yeah. 
So um, that I by think... itself, you know, he should absolutely get. To... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, ultimately, I believe that these particular coaches will do just fine. Yeah. Um, obviously, the microscope is going to be on the um, the Dallas Mavericks, the Portland Trailblazers, and the Celtics, obviously, because those particular teams have been in the playoffs, right, consistently and have coaches taking over for, I would say, pretty successful coaches. I could agree with that. I could agree you know, with that. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to count the Hawks because David Millen did a great job, and he's, you know, he's only taking over for himself. Um, so he's already done a great job. But I don't think a lot of people expect much from the Magic and Wizards so far because they're still dealing with some roster issues. The Pelicans is open. Uh, it's just an open opportunity. You got Zion, you know, you got, you know, Brandon Ingram. You got to figure out what they're doing with Lonzo, right? So they have some pieces there that they can build around. Which uh, I don't think they're going to resign Lonzo. I don't think so either, but it, we'll see. Apparently, they want Zion to have the ball. So I'm trying to figure out how they're going to get the be, ball. From, that could be very, very dangerous. I'm trying to figure out how they're going to get the ball from Brandon Ingram, let alone Lonzo. That's really yeah. my thing. But um, but other than that, I'm happy to see that these hires uh, happened. And uh, hopefully we see more of it in other Let's sports. See it. Let's do it. In other sports. Uh, speaking of other sports, uh, we had some baseball news, uh, very negative baseball news, very unfortunate. Uh, a as lot of negative news for baseball. The, yeah. As there was a shooting where three people were injured Saturday night outside the Nationals Park in Washington, D.C., sending, I mean, players and fans scrambling. I know some of the players went and grabbed some of their family members to bring to the clubhouse. Yep. They also uh, got some fans into there as well, too. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's, that's, um, that's, it's amazing that only three people were injured, but I'm happy that there were only three people injured. Well, I mean, and I know you originally was asking me, you know, how did they get through security? But of course, it was outside the stadium, not within the stadium. I think right. it was inside and, the stadium, it'll be, you know, pandemonium. Right. And I think when you sent me the text, that's why I, I, I was like, what? You said it because you said they were shooting at a baseball game. And I was like, <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Um, so initially, my, my mind eventually, of course, would automatically assume that it was inside the stadium but in my mind uh, i immediately went to the wire for some reason yeah i didn't i never watched the wire so you would have to elaborate on oh because it was in dc baltimore oh i don't know is that a wire thing yeah it's a wire thing it's fine (laughs) well people out there if you get it, that's great. I never watched The Wire. Uh, you but, I, I'm, watch sure the wire. <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody out there that's just like, man, that John Gotti guy, man, he's, he's so in the know. That guy, <laughs> that guy's T gone code, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we had a actual fan um, for, it was, it was, in, it was a Yankees in Boston? Fan. It was a Yankees fan um, in New York at Yankee Stadium. In New York at Yankee Stadium, threw a ball. Now, was this one of those situations where it was like you're throwing the ball back because it was a home run, or he just threw a bat, threw a baseball at the guy? He guy. just threw the baseball at him. Okay, so the fan, ladies and gentlemen, Yankees fan, actually yeah, so, threw so a baseball from the stand. Background with it, okay? Red Sox versus Yankees, heated rivalry. Of course, you know, which should be over Boston at this hates point. New York. New York hates Boston, and no one loves Philadelphia. Let's get that ah, out of the way. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, you know, outside, of course, all the allegations of, you know, racist comments being thrown at Players Way out there in Fenway in Boston, which has mm-hmm. been confirmed. Um, sure. Yankees, we're no saints. <laughs> um, and for some reason, with fans coming back into places, they have been acting a dang fool. This isn't the first time stuff like this has happened. This has not been the last. In fact, throughout this whole month, we had at least 10, 10 interactions with fans in a negative light in all sports, including wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that's bad. Yeah, I got to learn how to behave. 
Uh, there is no, no place for this in baseball whatsoever for this fan to do so. I applaud the Yankees organization for banning this player, this uh, fan for life from ever attending a, a game and the MLB from banning this fan for life because he should be. It doesn't matter if you hate the team. Like, that's just stupid. Like, don't do that. Just don't do that. Don't ever do that. Yeah, and just a quick statement here um, from the Yankees, of course. Uh, it says, while the Yankees appreciate the spirit and passion of our fans and our various rivalries, especially with the Red Sox, mm-hmm. reckless, disorderly, and dangerous behavior that puts the safety of the players, field staff, or fellow fans in jeopardy will not be tolerated. And it shouldn't be, and that should be a zero tolerance issue. Um and which I believe is, which that is why we made the statement regarding the Trey Young situation, Spitgate. Oh yeah, yeah, Spitgate. And uh, the water bottle being thrown at Kyrie, like those yeah. should all be zero tolerance. Unacceptable. First of all, right, right. the Trey Young situation is a a bio weapon. Firstly, let's just get that True. out of the way. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we can Especially now that. in hindsight that we are dealing with the almost second wave. It's not the second wave yet. I'm. Don't worry, folks. It'll still come. <laughs> uh, but no, come on, Yankees. Like, come on. I get it. You know, we, we we hate the Red Sox. I get it. But don't throw anything at them. Just don't do that. Like, yeah. the White Sox throwing an inflatable uh, trash can onto the field uh, when they played the Astros, that was hilarious. But it wasn't thrown at someone. Right. right. You know, that's one thing. Granted, you should never throw anything on the field or on the court, period. But that was hilarious. No, but no. You threw, it, think... you threw it at someone with the intent of harm. Right. And and that's where uh, that's where we draw that line. Yeah, you gotta draw the line. I think uh and I would also because even I would said. insert uh yeah. <laughs> I would insert who throws a shoe at this well, very moment. I mean I wouldn't say it's disbelief. Like, who throws a shoe, really? It's like, why would you do that? Well, again, who, who like, throws a shoe? Don't be daft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, just don't be dumb. Yes. It's just dumb. Because, I mean, because it really, in that situation, and, and you know, uh, the Yankees, you know, skipper, right? Aaron Boone, he's he, uh, he, a manager. Yep. Aaron Boone, yeah, right? Okay. Same thing. Skipper, yep. I want to make sure. Um. He said that the fan should be thrown in jail. Which, and he should be, because that's assault. Yeah, and I'm like... That is assault. It, you know, it, it's dumb to that's risk like, that's your like, livelihood. That's like, that's like uh, trying to run into a wrestling ring. You're going to get beat up and then thrown in jail afterwards. And thrown in jail and banned. Don't forget the banning part. Some fans get banned. Uh, it, it depends. Yeah, uh, but other than that... Hopefully, other fans realize. I understand New York. You want to help your team in any way no, possible. That does not help us. <laughs> but you just gotta refrain from the physical, the physicality of your emotions. Um, right but, now, we are nowhere close to getting this wild card. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that is not helping. <laughs> Hopefully the Jets and Giants play a little better this season. Uh, give us something or, you know, is, somebody. Is, is Doc serious? Is he serious, folks? I, I am, actually. Um, maybe Joe Judge has something in his sleeve or something. Uh, nice. But <laughs> we know you heard this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. But if you didn't, I know you can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to review this episode as well as all of the previous ones. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we go over more sporting news, more analysis, and the reads. 